Bavink himself was actually critical of Kuiper's lectures on Calvinism. Um, appreciative in some ways, but privately critical and directly towards Kuiper. Um, there's a really fascinating lecture from Bavink to Kuiper about his lectures on Calvinism, Whoa. where he said that um, he, well, Bavink doubted that the American audience was familiar enough with the, all of this philosophical background, the kind of stuff that we have in Bavink's Christian worldview, uh, to make sense of what Kuiper was actually saying. So he thought that Kuiper had really aimed over people's heads mm -hmm. because they didn't have the kind of background that, that was necessary to make sense of a, a neo-Calvinist worldview. So he was critical in that regard. Um, and he was also critical of Kuiper attempting to articulate the specifics of a Christian worldview in another culture, an American culture, as a Dutchman. So he, he said, <laughs> so he, he thought that, that you cannot... Um, uh, kind of, you can't tell other people what this has to look like in their culture. You do this where you're from, so you, you let this worldview develop more organically. Um, but Bavin was, was just kind of skeptical um, about whether a, a Christian worldview in America would ever take the shape that Kuiper was trying to encourage it to take. Mm. So that, mm. there, there's there's really interesting critique there. I think there's some, a little bit of tension in the background. It has a lot to do with personalities as well. Um, yeah. And then, of course, Bavin gave the Stone Lectures in Princeton a while after this, and then um, his, his, yeah, he also thought that he, well, his wife's remarks in it were that she thought that he was really struggling to connect with his audience and that they didn't seem to understand what he was saying either. <laughs> and philosophy of revelation. So yeah, came back to, yeah. the critique of Kuiper came back to haunt him because his wife basically said, Herman, this is happening to you too. Yeah. Philosophy <laughs> of revelation was definitely not philosophically light. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. doubt. Yeah. I'm writing a chapter on, um, Kuiper and Bavink's use of Calvinism, because of course, you know, you asked the question about uh, Kuiper's lectures on Calvinism, the relationship with, with Bavink, uh, you know, the word Calvinism is just, it just played so massively in the Kuiperian and Bavinkian imagination, especially in Bavink's earlier writings, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, interestingly, in, in Bavink's lecture, The Future of Calvinism, uh, he argues that Calvinism is a broader term than the term reform. Reform, it's just about doctrine and it's about ecclesiology. Yeah. But Calvinism is a whole world and life view. It has to do with, you know, reforming the whole culture. It has to do with reforming mm -hmm. science, art, and, 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 and every sphere of life. Because that's what Calvin was doing in Geneva and the Dutch could do in their own context and the Americans could do in their own context. Mm -hmm. I think that's what Calvin was envisioning. And so I guess that's one also ideological connection between Kuiper's lectures on Calvinism and Bavink's own thought is that they have always seen Calvin and Calvin's work in Geneva as an exemplary model uh, to follow, that Christianity ought to leaven everything. Mm. And Christianity is not just a pearl, but ought to leaven every area of life. Mm. Um, not just to imitate Calvin's Geneva, but in our own mm. context, what do we do now to leaven and to show how Christianity impacts every, every area of life? Mm. 